Hello, this is Jesse Sinigza, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to facilitate group work in Microsoft Teams. So here I am on the page that contains the list of the teams that I am a part of. Now, for example, I would want to facilitate group work with my 11 CAI class, so I'll click on it. And I have to make sure that I have groups created inside this channel. So I understand that you may not have these groups yet and to create this the first thing that we need to do is to click on the more options button here or the dot 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 if we click on it we have to add a channel now on this um, box the channel name so I, since I already have group 5 so I could name it group 1 but in your case you could name it um, depending on how many groups you would want. So you could start with group one, two, three, four, and so on. But since again, I already have group five, so I could just name this group six for the benefit of this um, PD session. And I am going to click automatically show this channel in everyone's channel list. So this means that anyone who is a part of this um, team could actually um, see this uh, group that we have just created. All right, so now we have groups one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now that you have your groups, the next thing that you need to do is to create the group members. And I actually created this grouping according to an online randomizer system. So you could just search for this online. There are lots of programs that would allow you to randomize a list of students so i have posted this and make sure that you post it under general because once you start your meeting with your class automatically they would actually be part of this general group so now let's assume that your students have started or have joined the meeting that you have set for your particular class and you are going to inform them that for today's session they are going to have a group work and you will direct their attention to the post in the conversation that shows their groupings and then before you would ask them to join their group you will have to activate their group meeting and we say, and when i say activate their group meeting it basically means starting a meeting for that group so to do that i'm going to click on group one and then i will start a meeting for that group so if you notice when i started the meeting for group one the meeting in general gets automatically placed on hold. So now that I have started a meeting for group one, I could go back to the general meeting and I will call the attention of the members of group one to join the group meeting that I have created for them. I am going to do the same thing for group two. So to do that, I will have to go to Teams again and initiate the meeting or activate the meeting for group two. So same thing, I click on group two and then click on meet now. So, so I am now in the meeting for group two and if you noticed, the meeting in general and the meeting in group one are automatically placed on hold. So I could now go back to the meeting in general in order for me to call the attention of the members of group two to join the group meeting that has been created for them. And now I'll do the same thing for group three. So I'm gonna go to Teams. I'll click on group three and meet now. Now that the meeting for group three has been activated or initiated, I could go back to the general meeting and then inform the members of group three to join the meeting that is created for them. So now I already have started the group meetings for groups one, two, and three. Observe what's going to happen if you are going to start the meeting for group four. So I'm gonna do the same thing, group four, and then click on meet. 
you will get this message you've reached the limit to start another call and one that you're on this actually means that in order for you to start the group meeting for the fourth group you will have to leave either the group meeting of group one two or three but before you leave that meeting make sure that the members of the group are already in that meeting otherwise they will not be able to join that group meeting so in so even if you would leave the group meeting say for example for group one even if you would leave the meeting for group one it could still go on for as long as there are people inside this meeting so assuming that the the members of group one have joined this meeting i could actually just hang up this meeting and then start the meeting for group four now the meeting for group four has been initiated and i could again go back to the general meeting and inform members of group four to join the group meeting that has been created for them now if you initiate the meeting for group five you would still get the same message saying you have reached the limit to start another call and one that you're on so meaning to say in order for us to be able to start the meeting for group five we need to leave the meetings that we are currently on so we could leave the meeting um, for group two three or four but again make sure that as you leave the meeting the members of the group are already in that meeting so that even if you would leave they could still um, carry on with their group discussion so for example I am in group number two and I have noticed so for example I am in group number two and I have noticed that members of the second group are, are already in this meeting so I could just hang up and then I could now start the meeting for group number five now that you have started the meeting for group number five you could go back to general and then inform them that members of group five you could now join the group meeting and then now that you have these groups a place on hold you could actually just switch from one group to another to listen to the discussion of the members of that particular group so now I'm in group three. If I would want to go to group four, I could just uh, click on play or resume. Then I'll be part of group four and be able to hear their conversations. Now, if you notice, I don't have groups one and two here. So what you need to do, you could just leave one of the groups. For example, I am now in group number five. I could leave group five and then I could join the meeting that is currently going on for group number one. Even if you leave that meeting and others are still on it, then you could actually still join the meeting. So that's how you could go from one group to another. On the next part, I'm going to show you my setup as I do group work with my students. So I usually have my laptop and my iPad being utilized at the same time. So this is my current setup for a group work that I did with 11 CAI so on the left this is actually my group um, group 5 and this is group 4 so on my laptop I have here the general meeting so in the event that any group needs my help so they could just put their group meeting on hold and they could um, talk to me on the general meeting i could also easily switch from one group to another just like here um, let me change this i'll put this call on hold and i could join a different meeting so i could join in group two or i would say group three so I could join group 3 Turn my video on And now I'm in group 3 And I just placed group 5 on hold I 
All right, so. So this is group work using Microsoft Teams can actually be done. Thank you.